Hey y'all, this is uh, Tom here from the LaRue team. I'm here to show you how you can go about customizing your Zoho CRM to meet your specific needs. So what I have on the screen here is a brand new instance of Zoho CRM. So I've just launched this and this is going to be the screen you get as soon as you log in. So at first it can seem overwhelming. How do I get this to be exactly as I need it and working for me? But I'm here to show you kind of go step by step on how you can get here. So this is <coughs> the screen here, like I said. And what I usually recommend someone doing as soon as they come in here is actually go to this here. And this is your settings area. And this is going to be actually where you can get a lot of the stuff done in terms of customizing your system to meet your needs. So let's go there right away. So when you come here, you're going to see a lot of different fields and a lot of what might seem overwhelming in terms of um, things that you might need to do. So for this video and what I would recommend, there's kind of four, actually five areas that I would say. So the first one being personal settings, second one being company settings, third one email, fourth one modules and fields, and then finally workflow rules. So let's go in that order. So if I click on personal settings, this will come up. And there's basically two main things I would say you should do in personal settings. So first of all, click that little pencil here. And what you'll notice is that when you do come into Zoho CRM, it might be annoying that you get for this Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson. So that was the name I re registered as. So this is the first thing I recommend you doing is just coming into here saying, fixing this. And this is something that happens from time to time in Zoho. So if this happens to you, you're not alone and you can just fix it like that. And then you can just pop in other information about yourself, your phone number, website, your date of birth, this sort of stuff. And what this is useful for is that if you do want to use templates later where you're pulling in these fields, they'll be populated. So maybe a signature you want to use to pull in these fields, that's available to you. Your address information as well. So you can put in this stuff, but the big thing I would change here is your first name, last name, and then anything else that you might want to use later. So let's hit save there. Number two is updating your profile picture. So you can come into here, just find a picture of yourself and pop that in. And then you can have a picture of yourself. It just personalizes your system a little bit. Finally, the last thing I definitely recommend you doing is putting in your signature. And this way, similar to what I was saying before, as you use email templates, this will be available to you to use in your email templates. I'm just going to put Thomas, this is my signature and then his phone number is, you know, 519-555-1234. And so just like that, now he has a signature that I can use later in email templates. So that's the first step. That's personal settings. So pretty straightforward so far, I hope. The next is company details. Um, so for this one here, similar, you just want to click this little pencil here. This will come up. And for the exact same reason, you might want to fill out some of this information maybe the address, the city, the state, all that information as it relates to your business. And this once again is just useful as you're putting together uh, different types of templates, having that information there. Um, so it can be available for you later. <clears throat> so you can pop that in. Something that you're definitely gonna wanna do is upload your logo. It's actually a bit more than just a nice aesthetics thing. It's actually something that you can use later. So it's a nice template that you can use you can pop in your logo here and now that's something that can propagate across your entire system the other items here fiscal year business hours holidays hierarchy preference the only one i would say to do is that if you do have a fiscal year that doesn't end in january and you plan on using some of the um, financial based applications in zoho you're definitely going to want to uh, change this here other than these ones here they're not too important i would say at this point if you're just getting started so that's company details. So we're moving along pretty well. So the other thing I mentioned, so I said one, two, three was email. So a big part of the Zoho CRM is just streamlining your communications. And so email is, a, is obviously a huge part of it. It's a huge part of how people today communicate. And so you wanna make sure that your <coughs> Zoho CRM is in sync with the emails that you're sending out through your other platforms. So let's just do a quick example here. So when you come in and click email, you can see there's a lot of different things here. I would focus on just your email configuration and this first tab here, email. So that's where we are right now, the first thing that comes up. So we'll hit get started. 
And then you choose basically if you are a server-based email company, you can see you have Zoho Mail, Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Office 365. All of these are available out of box. So I'll just show you what Gmail looks like. So for Gmail, I'll click that. I'll click the IMAP. And then as soon as I do that, this will pop up and this should look familiar. This will be your Google sign in sheet and this Google sign in uh, area here. You can put in those details. And then as soon as you do that, you're going to start getting that sync of your Zoho CRM into here. So that's the second way I would say you definitely want to customize your Zoho CRM. So sorry, third way. <clears throat> so that's three. So we're moving quite along quite nicely. Personal settings, company details, emails. And then the fourth one here, modules and fields. And this is actually a pretty big one here, so I'll spend a bit of time. So what you can see is basically these modules and fields, if I scroll down, you can see there's quite a few of them. And it actually relates exactly to what you're gonna see across here. So leads, contacts, accounts, lead, contacts, accounts. And if I click this three dots, I can see all the other ones down here. So quite a bit um, and you can see how this relates. So doing these modules is basically determining what you're gonna see across the top. So a lot of this can be overwhelming for people when they first start. So what I definitely recommend you doing is clicking organize modules. And what you'll be able to do is you'll select and unselect the ones that you're actually using. So for a lot of people, it really comes down to, especially if they're not using um, the financial side of the CRM, it's just for contacts and deals and that sort of thing. I kind of say, okay, analytics down is stuff that you might not need. So that's what I'm gonna do just for the purpose of this. I'm just gonna say, okay, yeah, I don't really at this point care too much about this stuff here. They all have their unique needs, but for you know a basic CRM, maybe that's not something that we want right away. And so we're left with a much more clean list of modules and I'll just hit save. And so you can see already, if I come into here, just lead contacts, accounts, deals, activities, reports, and analytics, and that's exactly what's here. <clears throat> so now let's go in and let's say, okay, these leads, I have this tab, but what type of information is gonna be in this tab? So let's click that. So you're gonna click this, and right away, it's gonna take you to a new screen, and you can see layouts, layout rules, validation rules, fields, links, button, summary. Just stick to layouts for now, and just click your standard. So that's all you have to do really. And when you come into here, this is where you can start having quite a bit, a bit of fun. I'll use the word fun. But basically in here, you can start defining exactly what fields you wanna see and what you don't want to see. So a couple of things I'll show you here is let's say I wanna add a new field. So this, for whatever reason, I'm an ice cream business and I wanna record someone's favorite ice cream flavor. So that's not a default field. That's all the ones that you see here. So I need to add that. So let's come into here. And all I have to do is I click and drag from the left hand side and I just name this field. So favorite ice cream flavor. And now you'll have that opportunity to record that for every lead that you have, type in your favorite ice cream flavor there. I could have also done a pick list. Maybe I wanna say, you know, favorite cake. Um, kind of going with a dessert theme here, but basically what you can do is, um, so that last one I did was a single line, so people could put whatever they want. But if you want select options, you can do a pick list. So it basically lets you define, say, oh, I wanna see if someone likes chocolate cake, vanilla cake, ice cream cake, or other. And those are the options that I want to record. And I can do that, and that's all very easy. If I wanna change options later, I just click these three dots, I can edit the properties and then the same screen comes up. And I can say, actually, I also want to record, I don't know, angel food cake <laughs> as an example. So that's how you can add fields and it's really easy. It's just to click and drag bringing things over. But let's do the reverse. Let's say, you know what? I don't want this field anymore. How do I get rid of it? And it's very similar. Again, these three dots give you a lot of power. So let's say Skype ID I don't care about for my leads. So I can just click that you can see I have all these different things here. The edit properties like I showed before with a drop down. So that's something I can click, kind of define things about that field. But you can see on the bottom, there's also the remove field. So I can just click that. A little warning will come up. You can say, yep, I want to remove it. And it's no longer in your view. <clears throat> but where it is, is actually in this unused field area. So if I do want to use it later, I can very easily just grab it, click and drag it over again. 
The last thing that I'll show you in this area is the idea of a section, which is something that's, I think, pretty powerful and just making this neat. You can grab this new section. You can have unlimited sections. I can just bring this in and I can say, you know, I want to say dessert information as an example. And so now I have this new section and now these new fields that I've created, I want them to appear in this section and I can just, it's all click and drag as you can see, I can pop that in. And so now once I'm happy with leads, say I'm happy with leads, I can just hit save. And so the same thing applies to all the other fields. And so I definitely think that's an exercise to do. And once you get in here, you'll just see how quickly that is to just click and drag um, and make it exactly what you want. So the last thing that I talked about was these workflow rules. So this is a bit more advanced, but I really think it's important to cover in this video because workflow rules is really where you can get a lot of power from your system. So let's go through a workflow rule. And basically the idea of a workflow rule, you can see it's under automation, but it's an automatic action. So let's click that. So I click into here, this comes up. One is available by default, this big deal rule. You can choose to use it or not. The details, just by clicking in, you can see them. But I don't wanna do that right now, I wanna create a new rule. And what I want is that every time I get a new lead from my website, I want to send them in, or, or at least create a task for myself to follow up with that person. So what does that look like? So it's gonna be related to leads and I'm gonna name this whatever you want, but I definitely recommend doing something relevant so you can remember it later. So let's say <clears throat> um, website lead follow up. That's probably good enough for me to remember what that is and I'll hit next. And so when I hit next, I get this screen here and it kind of walks you through this entire workflow series. So you can see, you can start with a trigger. I call it a trigger. So when does this action that I want to do, so if you remember the action I defined was creating a task for myself, when do I want that to happen? So there's three different things I can use. On a record action, on a date time, based on a score. No one really uses, or at least I don't use based on a score too much. I use these first two quite a bit. But for the purpose of this video, I'll use on a record action because that's the one I use the most. So that's on a record action. And you can see I have all these different options. So when a record is created, when a record is created or edited, when a record is edited, when a field is updated, or when a record is deleted. So those are all pretty self-explanatory. I want to go into detail with those. But create, let's start with create. And that's the one I'm going to do. So I want it to be when a lead is created. And then I say, okay, that's the trigger, but do I want it to go to all leads? If I want all leads, I just click this and I'm done, but I want to be a bit more selective. So I want to say, well, I want the, actually the lead source. So this is one of the default fields is, and hopefully there's a good one here, web research. And so that's what I'm defining people coming in through my website. So the lead source is web research, perfect. And so now you can see it's coming together. So whenever someone is created, who came from my web research, um, this trigger is going to happen. And so finally, this is where I can define my actions. So you can see I can do a field update, a tag, I can add or remove a tag, I can send an email, I can create a task, and then these two are a bit more advanced, sending a webhook or running a function. Um, they're definitely more advanced. If you're just customizing your CM for now, you're going to stick to the first four. So I'm going to do a task, and I'm going to create a new task. And so I'm just going to say, I'm going to call this follow up with this web site lead. I'm going to say I need to do that within, uh, I'd rather do one day of them writing in. It's not started, but it's going to be of my highest priority. And then who's going to do it? Well, this system that I have only has one user, but you can assign a particular person to it. I'll hit save, and then I'll hit save. And that's it. And so now I have that website, that rule. So whenever someone writes into my website, comes into my CRM as a web research lead, they're going to get this task where this task is going to be created. So I follow up with them. And so that's really it. So customizing your CRM, I think the big ones come down to these five things. Personal settings, company details, email, modules, fields, and workflow rules. So really master those. And I think you'll get very far with customizing your CRM. So that's it for today. Thanks for your patience in watching and good luck. Thanks for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave any comments in the section below.